Hi, this is Bastian and today we're going to um, analyze the Adelaide Wells variation of the King's Gambit declines. So, I had a friend ask me yesterday to um, annotate this opening. So, in order to do so, uh, we will set up the opening and play a game against um, or analyze a game against an engine called DB Chess, which is, I believe, 2200 plus. So, the Adelaide Wells variation is when we play e4, e5, then f4, the king's gambit. Black plays knight to c6, declining the king's gambit. White plays knight to f3. And now f5. And we can see that there is a, a lot of confusion and pressure in the center. The pawn can take pawn, or the pawn can take pawn, or knight can take and there is a defender on uh, the pawn on e5. So, white has three attacking um, possibilities. If he wants to attack right away, and some are good and some are bad. So, let's take a look at them. Pawn takes pawn is um, a good way to continue. Um, white recaptures a pawn but we can see that um, a pawn is under attack immediately on f4. So if pawn takes pawn, we can see now that our um, pawns become under attack uh, or will be become under attack by the bishops. So if white plays d4 in order to threaten that pawn, black may either play bishop to um, d6, which is um, playable, although it blocks the d pawn, or he can play more dynamically and play d5, counterattacking on the pawn on f5. Then white can grab the pawn, bishop to d6, bishop takes queen recaptures, still threatening the pawn on f5, but it cannot be um, protected properly. If, uh, for instance, bishop to d3, black can add another attacker with knight to e7. And we can see that black is getting more and more pieces developed. If g4 to support that pawn, well then that can be undermined by h5. So there's no real way to um, save the pawn. If instead of bishop to um, d3, Knight to h4 is played to um, support the pawn. Black can play queen to um, e1 check, um, attacking the knight as well, which basically forces um, queen to b2, abandoning protection on the pawn on d4. So knight takes, threatening the queen, queen takes, and knight recaptures. And still attacking the pawn on f5. This is uh, all this is good for black, of course. So let's go back to the, the original opening. If you take the pawn, black recaptures. Instead of d4, we can play d3. Now this still attacks the pawn on f4, but it prevents development of bishop to uh, d3 to support the pawn on f5. So this changes things a bit. Black can play bishop to um, d6 to um, protect his pawn. Then knight to c3 for instance. And now knight to h6. And there's uh, another attacker on the pawn on um, f5. Again, no possibility for the pawn to um, uh, go to d3 and defend. And g4 cannot be played because of pawn takes pawn en passant. So there are a lot of subtleties when we try to attack. Let's um, see if, uh, what happens with one of the other attacks. Pawn takes pawn for instance will lead to pawn takes pawn, a bad continuation for white. 
he immediately has to retreat his knight and there's only one square that is g1 um, knight goes to g1 and black loses the pawn so that's a bad way to continue alternatively white can take on the pawn with the knight knight can recapture pawn takes knight but then black can play queen to h4 check threatening to recapture the pawn on e4 so if king to e2 queen takes check king to f2 bishop to c5 check d4 bishop takes pawn check it's just an example of course and we can see that white is in a lot of trouble alternatively if g3 blocks we get queen takes pawn check with an attack on the rook so that's losing for light, white as well so let's go back to the opening out of the three choices it looks like pawn takes pawn is the only um, viable uh, way to continue the game but we do not have to attack right away what's also possible is to play defensive moves we can support our pawn on e4 and two good ways to do so is with knight to um, c3 or simply d3 uh, in this game d3 was played supporting the pawn on e4 so if pawn takes pawn recaptures and I still have a pawn island and if pawn takes pawn bishop recaptures with free development of the bishop for instance so d3 is a solid continuation against this opening black grabs the pawn on e4 I recapture so I have a pawn island black decides not to grab the pawn so I don't get free development instead knight to f6 is played immediately attacking the pawn on e4 pawn takes pawn threatening the knight almost forcing knight takes pawn on e4 and now queen to d5 and this move does a few things it develops the queen there is no um, immediate danger to the queen because if knight moves to um, c3 or um, f6 to threaten the queen we can see that both those squares are covered by the pawns it protects the pawn on e5 but also we are targeting the weak square on f7 now black is forced to uh, undevelop his knight knight to c5 is played bishop to c4 again targeting the square on f7 black plays knight to e6 to block the diagonal I castle indirectly putting more pressure on f7 black develops with tempo bishop to c5 check king moves to h1 out of check knight to b4 and this not only attacks the queen and forces it off of the diagonal it also attacks the pawn on c2 furthermore it will later on attack the rook on a1 which has become trapped so I need to move the queen I can move to um, d2 or d1 which supports c1 or c2 but instead I play queen to e4 still protecting um, the c2 pawn black castles knight to c3 so I'm continuing development and freeing up space for the rook rook to f7 now the knight on e6 can move freely because of otherwise there was a discovered check with the king on um, g8 and I now play h4 and there are a lot of possibilities in this um, situation h4 is a very committing move um, it's protected twice against say the attack of um, the queen but it also creates weaknesses so not only does it attack but my king is uh, less safe for the moment other possibilities are a bishop to d2 
uh, to free up um, the rook and perhaps create an attack on um, the knight. Black plays d6. I recapture. Queen takes pawn. Rook to d1, free development on the open file. Queen goes to c6. And black hopes to um, trade off queens because this queen is needed against the attack of the knight. I play knight to g5 and this creates a lot of uh, tactical opportunities and complications. I have first off two defenders on the queen which are the two knights. I can um, play queen takes pawn or a knight takes pawn. I can play knight takes rook, knight takes knight. So black trades off the queen. I recapture, bringing this knight more into the game. Now my main attacks are um, knight takes uh, rook, knight takes knight, and we have a new attack, knight takes bishop. However, this is at the cost of the pawn on c2 and the rook uh, on a1. So knight takes pawn, knight takes bishop. We note that there are three attackers on the knight on e6. There's a discovered attack on uh, the rook and the king later on. And there's one defender on the knight. So knight takes rook on a1, knight takes knight, bishop takes, bishop takes bishop. Now the rook is lost. It cannot move because of the discovered check. King to f8 to get out of um, the check with tempo. Knight takes rook. Knight to c2, so um, the knight escapes. And rook to d7. Adding a second defender on the knight on f7. Also creating attacks on the pawns on a, b and c file. Black plays rook to e8, threatening the only unprotected piece and developing his rook. Now bishop to d5 would be a bad move because then black can play rook to e1 check and gain uh, the bishop. Uh, white is still winning at this point but white can afford to play knight to g5 to protect the bishop. There are no pawns that can chase the bishop, bishop away and there are no pawns that can chase the knight away because of h if, if h6 is played I can play knight to h7 checkmate so h6 cannot be played rook to e7 is played instead hoping to trade off rooks so rook to d8 check rook to e8 but I do not want to trade off rooks now knight takes pawn on h7 check and we can see that with our bishop on e6 there's only one uh, forced move left, uh, king to e7. So king moves to e7. Um, bishop to um, g5 check, sacrificing bishop on e6. King takes bishop, but this is an exchange sacrifice. Rook takes rook with tempo, check. King to f7, rook e7 check. King to g8, attacking the knight. Once again, we are sacrificing our minor piece. h5. Continuing the attack with the h pawn. King takes knight. h6. And now the king cannot take the pawn because of the bishop. And the pawn cannot take the pawn because of rook check. And of course, our next move will be rook takes pawn check. So, black um, brings his knight back into the action. Rook takes pawn check, king h8, and I can continue and grab the free pawns on a, b and c file, but I play bishop to f6 instead. And this move, um, if the bishop could pass through uh, the rook, would be a checkmate. So knight to d5, attacking the bishop, bishop to e5, 
knight to e7 and I could simply grab um, the knight with tempo but instead I play h7 knight to f5 rook takes pawn check um, only one move knight blocks rook takes knight forcing black to move the pawns black plays b5 and I grab the pawn on a7 with the discovered checkmate so that was a game uh, against the, the Adelaide Wells variation of the King's Gambit I hope you enjoyed watching it and uh, please leave a comment and have a great evening